Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. This is your main man, RJ, from the Ringside Rant, heard only on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. So go over and subscribe across all your major platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher, to hear every great interview I have every Monday on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. Go over and follow the show's page on Twitter, at underscore Ringside Rant. Follow the network's page, at BizWrestleNet. And, as always... Embrace the vision. Hello, friends. This is Spencer Love, your host of Over the Top Rope on the Wind Column Sports Network. Don't forget you can head to windcolumnsports.ca for all of your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling, be it your major promotions or from the great province of Alberta, Canada. If you like podcasts, and you are listening to on Backbreaker Media, then you should listen to me, Chris Parrish, and myself, Manoia, and the Sounds of Struggle, because we are literally the most entertaining duo you'll ever come across in Western Canadian wrestling, baby. We talk about things like wrestling, and other sports we like. Like wrestling? But we won't talk about other sports that we don't like. Because it's not that kind of podcast. Like wrestling. I mean, uh, I mean, we like hockey. And wrestling. And we like football. And wrestling. And we also like to drink beer. While wrestling. Well, not while wrestling, but while watching wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. uh, If you want to get into a conversation with Maniac and Chris Parrish, then you need to tune into The Sounds of Struggle live on Backbreaker Media. Every Thursday. It's when we hope to draw, but sometimes Mal Ma- Mike Malawaney doesn't do his job right. Or we're too drunk to forget. Yeah, that happens too. Yeah. Uh, he can believe about the swear word, because we weren't supposed to do that. Oh, but I'll try not to swear. Ah, f- I can't do it. Yeah. Um, let's face it. The two of us, we're real. And spectacular. And we're a little bit of all right. Yeah. We're also Struggalicious. That we are. That was kind of a cute. Supposed to be a Struggalicious. Oh, sorry, I'm drunk. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you don't want to listen to us, then no. You're stupid because we're entertaining. And uh, if you want to do listen to us, then uh, yeah, come listen to us on Backbreaker Media. Yeah. Later, he said. Bi- later, bitches. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quick Calls. I am your host, Andre C., right out here at in Radway for the first time for a Quick Calls from the Radway Ag- Agricultural Center for RCW New Year's Rampage. And tonight I am joined by my good buddy from Wilcom Sports. He is... Spencer Love. Yeah, you know what, man? I don't even think you can say you're the host of this anymore. I think we are officially... I'm going to staple myself in here as the co-host. We are... Uh, okay, you're co-host of the show, of, uh, Andre C. Quick Calls. I believe that as Backbreaker Media has now become a part of the Wind Column Sports Network, I think it is only fair that I give myself... I'm taking executive privilege. I am your co-host, Spencer Love. I, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> My co-host, Spencer Love. And we are here in Radway and... Man, I had a great time tonight. I got the ring announce this show. That you did, but I sit. I was sit. I kind of got it. It wasn't a, like it's a nice little venue. So everywhere you're sitting, 
you could it was really good seating and I'm just said just I was seated just behind the second row. Yeah. And it was great. I loved it. Dude, first time in Radway, Alberta, I think a lot of people if if you weren't from Radway, Alberta, if you're coming to Radway, Alberta, chances are it's your first and only time in Radway, Alberta. But I, I, it was I've driven by here a few times. Right? I feel like there's I've never met anybody and I don't mean this is a slag on Radway, it's just never anywhere I'd ever heard of prior to honestly the announcement of this show. Well our but, good buddy Mike the ref lived here. Never mentioned it. Yeah. He, he always told us he lived in Redwater, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's put him under a little more. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. No, I think that it's a great venue. The crowd was awesome. You never really know how it's going to be when you're going somewhere for the first time in a long time. Um, I think if I was remembering what Mike was telling me, it was something like 30 or 35 years since they've had. Thir- I think he announced 31 years yeah. in there when he's in the ring. Yeah, so that's insane to me that they haven't watched live wrestling in this long and they were still so behind it still so into it and it's a testament to all the great work RCW is doing so so the, so the show kicked off with our own Mike the Reth getting into the ring and, and uh, welcoming everybody to the to the venue and Pride, Pride and Envy decided to cut him off so out comes Pride uh, you know back forth he goes about he's saying he's the best he, he, he's every you know he, you know G- Pride's general general Pride shenanigans and uh, <laughs> so he it, everything and then uh he ends up getting in Envy's face, and he gets an argument with Envy, and she ends up slapping him. Yeah. That, I loved it. Because I, I always love seeing Mike get hit at any time. <laughs> I'm, a little mean. I'm, I'm a bad friend. Let's That's say that. I, mean, I'm, I, I like a good spot. Don't get me wrong. Pride's a great promo. I always enjoy hearing that guy cut a promo. And, obviously, you can't say a ton about someone who just goes in and slaps somebody, but Envy, the way that she... I guess emotes her character even in little sequences like that is absolutely fantastic I think she is you know you and I sing her praises a ton and we will later on I'm sure in this podcast but like she's really starting to kick into another gear not even just as a wrestler but um, like the personality, said, as the in, yeah, exactly the in-ring personality to it. Yeah. So from there, I, I get I get I get to take over from Michael, and we get our first match of the evening, and it is uh, Cameron Stevens taking on D- Dean Real Talk Richter. And I gotta say the one first thing about Dean Richter, reading is saying he's from the Viridian City Gym, straight out of Pokemon. I love it. I've always appreciated it as an avid Pokemon Go player. Um, the best Pokemon Go player. I'm looking at a couple of you out there. Um, loved it. Um, and, and I love the chemistry that these two have, to be honest with you. It's not a match. Um, it's not a match that I would have expected to kick off a card. And it's a yeah. match that I'm very happy kicked off a card. Just because it's so rare that you see either of those guys um, kicking off a card, you know. Especially, not to sort of break too much here, but between sort of Onslaught and that, you're used to Dean Richter being in a tag team role for the most part. I'm used to him being sort of near the main event scene. Yeah. Um, and Cameron Stevens is a guy who's really starting to develop into a guy who's starting to get to that main event scene. So, um Odd, but in the best possible way to see him kick this off. And I thought they put on a fantastic match to kick the night off. Gets the crowd into it. Yeah. Both of them played their roles very, very well. I I really, really am starting to get more and more into Dean Richter the more I watch the guy wrestle. I think Dean Richter is a great in ring technician. I I don't I don't think he's ever really disappointed and I like I'm I watched him from when he was in Mosh Pro Wrestling. I, I was commentating, doing the commentary with Mike back then for them when he first debuted, and I've watched this guy become one of the most solid wrestlers in in this province. Like his, his technical ability is top notch, and Cameron Stevens, like I've, again, another guy I've been watching since day one in his career when he was just 17 years old. Yeah, like he started when he was 17. I I love this. I, I love this kid in and out of the ring, uh, man. And is it that? But he come off the top with an elbow drop, and Dean Richter moved. He just came crashing down, and I just you you were like you feel the pain in him because you could just <laughs> see that he missed the big. This is a guy. Isn't a guy that goes off the top much. Yeah. So when he goes to the top for a move like that, it's kind of big. And he, it was a crash and burn situation, but uh, impressed. But in the end, Dean Richter did pick up the victory, and uh, he, he, he keeps moving up the ladder here in RCW. Yeah, I don't disagree, and I think that the guy's absolutely primed for a great 2019. Oh, very much so. So move on to our second match in the evening, and it is a RCW Tag Team Championship match. It is the NVR, uh, this time consisting of Andrew Hawks and Vince Austin, 
conspicuous by his absence is is the giant Gunnar. You never know where he's lurking, right? And uh, taking on a team I've never heard of, I've heard of before, and I got to see tonight, and it is the Canadian Goose and the Canadian Grizzly, collectively known as the Canadian Wildlife Foundation. I kind of liked him, to be honest with you. I know there's going to be some people out there who hear that name and hear the names of the two wrestlers and sort of slough it off, but like for two guys that, um, like you said, I'd never really heard of before, I don't think I've ever seen any video, anything of that sort, as far as I can tell, this was their debut, I think that they put on a fairly solid match for a debuting team. I think that um, they both, in a tag team sense, they both play their roles very well. I think that uh, the Canadian, I still love it, the Canadian Goose, um, (laughs) prototypical prototypical babyface in peril, especially when you've got a guy the size of the Grizzly on his side. Like, yeah. um, They've just got a really, really great dynamic to them. I think that obviously the comparison gets a little bit of shit right now because of where the two guys are, but like, I think early Enzo and Cass where they've got just a one guy taking a beating, doing it very, very well. I, there's nothing wrong with taking a beating oh, yeah. if you do it well. Taking it well and then sort of going to the bigger guy for the support, and I think well, yeah, that's they, the dynamic. Especially in the second teams. half of the match is is where the NVR really took over in that match. Because, like, the Goose and Grizzly did get a, a good bit of offense in that first little bit of the match. To be honest, and, and more it, than I thought they would. Yeah, and it, it like... It overshadows come the the rest of the match in how much the MVR beat on the beat on Goose, and a good bit on the Grizzly too. But I I, I was actually very impressed, especially Grizzly, King Grizzly. He the power out of this guy, like he caught Hawks and slammed him. He caught Austin, he slammed him. Like he he's got the power to to to. I, I'm still saying he's he's still they're still new, but he still eventually could be a great big man for big man for RCW. Absolutely, and if the two of them are going to keep making consistent... I shouldn't even say keep making. If they're going to start to make consistent appearances, I'm excited to see where they go. I think RCW's got a great tag team division starting to build, and I think that they could be huge assets for it if they continue to develop the way they have. And the crowd really did get behind the Canadian Wildlife Foundation. Like, they, they were solid, especially... They, like, they, I heard the chant, cr- chant and Goose. Like, they really got behind Goose, especially. He, really like, he was getting his ass kicked, but they, were get, they got behind him. This sounds like we're recording one of those, like... Canadian history moments. <laughs> People love the Canadian Wildlife Foundation. <laughs> but in the end, the MVR do hit, do uh, finish off. They actually t- hit the, the Canadian Grizzly with the uh, snuff pile driver and get the one, two, three, and keep the championship. This would have been a huge upset had the Canadian Wildlife Foundation won the titles. Oh, 100%. Like, I, I think the snuff pile driver arguably is the deadliest finishing move in all of real Canadian wrestling. Man, Vince Austin and Andrew Hawks, in the best possible way, are madmen. And yeah. I think that, you know, I, I don't want to undersell the Canadian Wildlife Foundation here, but I think that if Gunnar the Pig and Destroyer was to be here tonight, it would have been a very, very quick night. Yeah, I agree with that. So we get to move on to RCW Women's Action, which was a real treat tonight because we got a debut in this match. That We got the in-ring debut of Kylie Morgan taking on... As I mistakenly said, I really I, I should have avoided saying the former RCW Women's Champion because I almost said Women's Champion. I, I added former. I kind of messed up, and she got really she got really pissed at me for it. That's the thing. She got really pissed. I think that's more the losing the championship. To be honest with yeah. you, I mean I'd be pretty upset if you completely screwed up my intro as well. But yeah. I mean you wouldn't be you wouldn't be the only one making that mistake tonight. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so. And I, I quite enjoy this match. Like you could see, again, this is another match where you could see somebody who is newer to the in, in the ring, her first match in the ring, but didn't look bad no. uh, in, in any way. I really quite enjoyed this, and MV as always looks stellar. I think her her abilities in it in that ring, and e- when she's getting beat, and when she's beating on her, it's just. She sucks you in. I, I, I watch her match. She really sucks me in as a fan now, with with the with her personality growing as much as it had. She really, she really gets you invested in wanting to hate her and wanting to see her lose. Yeah, I think that um, to play off of that, like she is, she is so so good. Um, I mean, now it, it has changed a bit, so this is why I struggle with the explanation a bit because now that she does unmask during the matches for the most part. Um, 
my previous comment used to be like what she can do and what she can emote with only her eyes and, and sort of the story she can tell with just the facial expressions and, and it's something that I think is huge anywhere in wrestling I think it's something you learn from you know the best of the best and I think that that's something that you can't really teach no I think it's something that she's 100% got um, to go back to Kylie Morgan I think that as a debuting talent it, unless she pulled out the, the only way it could have been better would be if she pulled out the victory tonight yeah. I think that she looked excellent. I think that she pushed someone who, as you said, a former RCW Women's Champion, the longest reigning as of this point, RCW Women's Champion in, in the title's current incarnation. Yep. And I think it would have been... She took that person to the limit, Kylie Morgan did. And I think that, again, it would have been considered a bit of an upset but it, were, she to loo- or were she to beat Envy, as I stumble over every word I'm saying right yeah. now. Um... But I, I also think that she did as well as humanely could be expected against someone who is a veteran talent in the ring as of this point, as mentioned, champion, yeah. uh, championship material. But it, she did it, great. I say the X factor for Envy in this match because it did help lead her to the victory. It was pride on the outside. Well, yeah, but I think that, to be honest with you, Andre, at this point, that that's always assumed either way. Like, yeah. As I'm sure we'll get to in the Pride MRB match. Uh, it, it was yeah. the same in that match as well, right? You can't really a hundred percent say that the other wasn't involved. Yeah, it's for, for, lack, of key, for lack of a better way to keep that diplomatically objective. Yeah, so Envy <laughs> does pick up the victory and just showing her pure dominance of this RCW Women's Division. So we move on to our fourth match of the evening, and it is another tag team match. It is the team of. And this is going to surprise many. Heavy Metal and the RCW Canadian Champion Christian Strife. I don't know what got into him tonight. Collectively known as Top Talent, just for kicks. They are taking on the team of Son of, Son of Irish and a man who is, ma- I think, making his second RCW appearance in Dylan Stone. And they, I was told tonight, they're they're known as the Blarney Stone. Yeah, I popped during this entire match. That was some of the most fun I've had in a wrestling match in a long, long time, to be quite honest with you. I think it is just the fact to not get too into kayfabe breaking or anything here, but uh, after Heavy Metal and Strife had their feud, it is cool to see them tag team, even if it is a one-off, whatever it may be in the future. I think that watching those two who obviously know each other so well after feuding for the last 18 months... Teaming together just seems like a natural fit, to be honest with you, despite the personality differences. Um, I thought they melded together both both well personality-wise and in-ring-wise. Like They hit some absolutely devastating moves on, on Son of Irish and Dylan Stone. And, man, it's just, it was cool. I have no real other way to put it, to watch those two team up against two other personal favorites of mine. How can you complain, right? Yeah, I was... I, I, my my limited viewing of Dylan Stone, I had I love this guy. He, like I, the cocaine calamity, Mister Saturday Night himself, uh, the man who uh, I just I love this guy, and Son of Irish, who I did put, I gave him him and Andrew Hawks my match of the year the, the, this this past year on the uh, Backbreaker Honors, which you can find on the Backbreaker Media Network. Cheap uh, plug. Uh, <laughs> through Win Column Sports. Cheaper uh, plug. Even cheaper. But, man, and again, Heavy Metal impressed me and, uh, yet again. He, he, sh- he shows his ability. His character ability has never been something that I've ever doubted because he... he he always gets a crowd to hate him, and Strife just turning, turning it on. Man, I these guys and Dylan Stone just hits that beautiful running knee, then puts it puts uh, drop it drops uh, stri- Strife, yep. drops Strife, and then Son of Irish hits the 450 splash, gets the one two three on the RCW Canadian Champion. Yeah. That has to be a, a very big plus for Son of Irish. I completely agree, man. There's nobody who came out of this match looking bad, I don't think. I think, you know, in your limited experience watching Stone, I also have limited experience, but he was also a guy. You mentioned your match of the year. Him and Pride was one of my matches of the year as well. I think that he is someone who, again, strictly due to the fact that his schedule is a little more limited, um, he is a completely underappreciated talent Very in Alberta. Much. Every match people watch of his, he is someone that people remember. And I think the same even at, at I don't know how old Son of Irish is, but he's got to be 
like 18, 19 at best. Yeah, he's a young he, boy. He is someone who consistently impresses. And if he's this good, this young, like how good is that guy going to be six months from now, a year from now, a couple of years from now? Like, yeah. You're talking about two guys on that team specifically who are just – they can completely blow the Alberta wrestling scene up. And I think the same can be said despite the fact they maybe get a little more recognition because they have held championships consistently, that sort of thing. But heavy metal and strife, I could say the same thing about them. Well, I'll say this to Sunday, right? It's a, it, his father is the Irishman, and the, he grew up in this in, in the business. So that that puts a lot into you growing up in the business, I, I have to say. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you there, but... You know, I've never really bought the argument that like it's it's the same argument you could make for a show. No, but I, but, but I'll say or, that just being going to RCW, I watched him on like him train with wrestlers and mm-hmm. watched him train from a young age. So like I know he, it, it it's been green into him everything about pro wrestling. Hundred percent. But I think that also means that he holds himself. Again, I say this all without knowing the guy or ever meeting the guy, but I feel like that would inspire someone like him to aspire for something greater you know he holds himself to a higher standard and i think that's very evident that he's already going out and hitting 450s to win matches against the cw or rcw excuse me canadian champion yeah and very it's very impressive yeah so we go to intermission we come back from intermission and we get a triple threat match between uh cody chimera uh it was like i I can't uh chris blade so i apologize and everybody's favorite sweet daddy soul yeah, this is my first time hearing of two of them, and my well, you, first time... You, you missed Chimera's debut, actually, last week at the RCW show as part of Dirty Inc. Yep, that's fair. I wasn't there. But this um, was Chris Blade's, again, a, another debut yeah. for, Chris Blade, for Chris Blade, as far as I know. I don't, I've never heard of him before. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just the convenience of coming out to Radway, Alberta, but I think that it's cool to see wrestlers, even for myself, who... You know, I'm not as ingrained in the wrestling scene as you guys are, but um, it's very, very, very cool to see people like that starting to come out. You know, I was very impressed throughout this match. Sweet Daddy Soul is always a personal favorite of mine, just like our friend Mike the Ref is. Um, But he's just, he's fantastic. And I think that the way this match sort of shaped out, where it was for the most part a two-on-one handicap match. Yeah. I think that Sweet Daddy Soul looked absolutely excellent as the baby face in peril, using my air quotes here. Um, and the other two guys looked fantastic, especially for, for a guy who's just seeing them for the first time. Oh, my God. Stop trying to take the mic from me. Okay. I, I, I just have two, ah. quick, I have two quick things, and i got to get back to get, getting things organized here because when you get to the end of the show, you're going to realize that I'm a little bit more involved than I have been in a very long while over here in this company. Number one, bitch that Envy slaps hard. I'll say that. The receipt, I got to give her on that. Yeah, she deserves something, but I'm a gentleman. I won't touch. Well, she's not a lady. You just called her a bitch. Yeah, well, she is a bitch, but that's beside the point. Um, But the other point and the more important one for you, I've just been in the back talking with the Irishman, the uh, RCW commissioner full time. And I'm going to make this very clear right now. The match that we scheduled for next month in Bruderheim is not the last Indie Dream match you're going to see coming up. I will promise you that, and Backbreaker Media will be announcing that. So, steps for later, boys. Enjoy finishing up the podcast, and I'll talk to you guys next weekend for uh, RCW... um, Fight for Respect uh, featuring Nicole Matthews. Yeah, I'm pretty wait for that. But anyway, well, wait. I was worried Mike wasn't going to come over here and like completely ruin my evening with knowledge I don't get, but thanks again, Mike. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, back to the triple threat. Sweet Daddy Soul, like, I, I flat out love this guy. I think he, uh, he, had, he had a great 2018, like, really improved 2019, and I think it's poised to really be a star for RCW yeah. in 2019. He's got the crowd behind him, he's got one of the most entertaining theme songs going right now. Not only, just to go back to your point there, Andre, not only does he have the crowd behind him, but he naturally turned the crowd to him. This wasn't Oh yeah. This wasn't a situation where there was a baby face turn and he had to gain momentum or something along those lines. People got behind the guy because he's talented. Um, yeah, flat out. 
I completely think that he's, or sorry, I completely agree that, that he's going to have a huge 2019. He's got the guaranteed championship opportunity well, already. Well, he doesn't currently have it in his possession well, due to Cameron Stevens and the rest of Dirty Inc. Yes, but there, or as I like to call them, instances. Sydney Inc. But if you don't, like, that's happened before. Zach Mercury yeah. was still a champ when he when he lost the belt. So. Yeah, he's still not the belt. I don't know. Nobody knows where that belt is. Well, it got but, stolen. But in the end, uh, uh, Cody Chimera did uh, Sweet Daddy Soul hit his uh, stunner yeah. and then Cody Chimera ran in shoved Sweet Daddy Soul out and got the pin on uh, Chris Blade and Cody Chimera getting a, I think a great victory here like and, and very impressive in in this match I, I, I love seeing new talent and We'll see where he goes from here because he, he does have that association with Dirty Inc. Yep. When so, you're equally when you're equally matched with your opponents, the only way you can be better is by being smarter. And it's it's unfortunate for me to say, personally, just because I am a huge fan of Sweet Daddy Soul. But Cody Kamara, like he was the smartest guy in this match. He really was. He aligned with Blade early. He used the two on one advantage to his advantage. Yep. And he came out with a victory tonight. You can't really ask for much more than that. And I'm impressed pretty much with all these guys in the match. So from there, I, I got to point this out. We went to the 50 50, pulled the first ticket. Somebody bought one and didn't claim it because I had to pull one again. So, so uh, one of the fans here went home with $205, ladies and gentlemen. It's $205. Whoa, whoa. You were just mistaken, that's great. <laughs> oh crap! I feel very, very fat right now. Um, so, uh, so one of the fans did go home with two hundred five dollars. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you're at, it, at a wrestling show, buy a fifty-fifty ticket. It, it, it can win you two hundred two hundred dollars. I will say that Andre pulling the card for the fifty-fifty was probably the worst match of the evening. <laughs> they botched the original finish. Yeah. So uh, we had to move on to a second improvised finish and I, you know, I, I think I they I think I think they pulled it off admirably, but you could still definitely tell oh. that the finish was not supposed to be that way. I am way too green, man. I'm way too green. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to our main event of the evening and uh, it is Pride taking with with Envy taking on the man I had to scream to introduce because the mic, the mics, and the, and everything went dead. Michael Richard Blaze in what we were calling an indie dream match. Not what we were calling an indie dream match. I mean, it was definitely said more than once, but I feel like it just it simply was an Alberta indie dream match. These are two of the most talented guys, I think, in the industry period. But you can certainly say in Alberta. Um, Obviously, you got to mention, like, it, it really does come down to, I can sum it up perfectly with, you mentioned that the mics go out and, and the sound system goes out and all of that. And for a lot of people, that seems like it would rattle them going into a match. MRB yeah. was a consummate professional, gets the crowd on his side early, just well, simply just, just getting, just, them, yeah, getting just, them invested. Just on the entrance, he's like, come on, when yeah. he's got them, and he's he's going around slapping everybody's hand, yeah, just yeah. getting it's, everybody uh, jacked up. It's 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 just an exhibit in professionalism. I think there's a reason we say the guy's one of the best in the business. He is one of the best in the business. And, uh, man, I think the same can be said about Pride. Obviously, he didn't have the good fortune or misfortune, whichever way you choose to look at it, have, having his music completely shit out on him. But I think that he did an excellent job. Pride came into this match with the most to sort of prove. That's yeah. not a knock on him, but that is just... He was coming into this against a guy that many regard as the best in Alberta. And I think coming into a match where he did have more to prove, he completely proved himself. Oh, yeah. Completely proved himself. Um, it's also the other big credit that I want to give to him is it's, it's harder to be a great heel when you're physically just shorter than the other person or, or physically smaller than the other person and I think he did an excellent excellent job of making it not only believable but completely conceivable that not only was he going to beat MRB but he was going to destroy him like there were a couple of spots throughout that match where like man he just laid some bombs on him and the same can be said about MRB but I, I it was can, nuts but one thing to say to pride match. is you're, you're saying like it takes a lot for a guy like him to to be a, a heel, being as no, small. No, no, but no, no, no but no. It, it takes work when you when you're a guy who's smaller than your opponent and you're trying to be the heel. And it, it's the same thing you said for Andy. It's that ability to really work work a crowd and show with your facials, with your 
attitude with everything and he does it every time he goes out there and he just has I don't know what it is but it's just that ability to get people to hate him yeah and I think it's great and this crowd like was go was chanting throughout the, most of the match and I like and I had like a few there's a few kids over by where the, the in the area I was sitting yeah and they were just constantly just MRB, MRB. Like they were, every, everybody was into it. It is very, very difficult, no matter who you are, to keep a crowd that invested. Two and a half hours into a show, Andre, we're recording this at ten to ten to eleven at night. Both yeah. of us drove forty-five minutes to an hour to be out here. We got yeah. that drive to get home, and there were still people that were that excited about this match. Again, two and a half hours into the show. It and, speaks and, to their ability. And, and how long did they go? Half an hour? Uh, just under half an hour. Yeah. Like, they were... At what, the finish, it was... I think the clock was sitting around 27, 28 minutes. Somewhere. I can't yeah. remember exactly, but yeah. And I would have... I had an, I, I'd announced 25 minutes, so... Well, and it would have gone longer if it wasn't for the actions. And I, I popped so hard, man. Oh, I too. can't even say otherwise. Uh, the reigning PPW heavyweight champion, Chris Parrish, appears literally out of nowhere. Yep. Uh, interrupts the match. He ran through the front door. He just ran in through the front door of the building. I don't yep. know where the... He, how, did, how did he knew to be here? Obviously, because we've been promoting very well. Yeah. <laughs> but like how he knew to be here at the perfect time to interfere with I don't know. But that guy... Yeah, came just comes flying in through the front door. I'm like, where, who, where the hell is he doing here, dude? And that guy made an absolute statement, arguably on the level that I don't even want to say arguably. I would put it on the same level as Michael Richard Blaze and Jack Pride or Jack Pride. Oh, he's gonna hit you. I was. I followed him on Twitter the other day, and he still got that. So I will blame him a little. Hey, on it's, that it's one. still it's still there on Facebook just, too. Well, and I'm going to accept my 90 percent of the blame on that one. I'm very sorry, Pride. Um, <laughs> Parrish coming in and interrupting this match and cutting that promo after it. Absolutely excellent promo. There's a reason I say he's the best in the business on the mic in Alberta. Yep. Even outside of his wrestling ability, he's the best in the business on the mic right now. And, uh, man, did he make a statement taking out two of the guys who, like, he literally said it himself. He says, you want to have the Alberta Indy Dream Match without me? That is a statement made and a statement heard. And I think, you know, Mike the Ref brings up earlier that there's going to be more, quote-unquote, Alberta Indy Dream Matches. If you think that Chris Parrish isn't going to be involved in any of those... You're crazy. You're absolutely nuts. Yeah, absolutely nuts. So I think, yeah. despite the fact everybody always gets a bit of a sour taste in their mouth when you get a sort of non-finish, I think if you're going to get a non-finish as far as a match like this goes, holy fuck, did you end it well? Yeah, it was Chris Parrish coming in, and yes, he cuts the promo and says, "Why are you doing this without?" And then out comes RCW owner uh, Stephen Styles and. Our good buddy Mike the Ref and recovered from the earlier slap. Yeah, reco- I, I'm, I'm surprised he could he recovered from that one. But he does. They come out and he gets on the mic and he's he's telling Parrish like you got to stop. And then he, the RCW commissioner is in the crowd after Stephen Styles whispered him something and he turns and is like, "Can I make a match?" Mm-hmm. And the commissioner is like, "Sure, why the heck not?" So he books for February 23rd in Bruderheim, Alberta. It's going to be February twenty fifth, twenty third, twenty third, Saturday the twenty third. Well, oops, <laughs> did you book the wrong day off? No, I, I wrote the wrong day. Yeah, so February Saturday, February twenty third. It's going to be the RCW Junior Heavyweight Champion Pride taking on the current Pure Power Wrestling Champion uh, Chris Parrish in again another. In my opinion, another indie dream match. I, I, these two together is going to be epic. It's going to be outstanding, man. I genuinely can't wait. I'm very, very excited. I think, to be quite honest with you, man, it's hard not to be excited about upcoming RCW shows. I think, despite the fact, not not despite the fact, in spite of the fact they're bringing in people like Nicole Matthews. I still don't feel like I'm phrasing this correctly. But bringing in people like Nicole Matthews and bringing in people um, is a great thing. But I think that this roster is a talented enough roster that... If they're not bringing talents in, they're going to do just fine. Now, continue hey. bringing them in. I want to see Nicole Matthews absolutely desperately. Hey, looking at the last Edmonton show, it was pretty damn packed in that venue, and there was no, there was, it was, it, no, nobody. Our the some of the best wrestlers in Alberta on that card, and but no, 
big names to try and sell it, and we and we, they packed that house. Dude, hundred percent. I think RCW's got nowhere to go but up, and they've done nothing but go up over. I've been coming for about a year, I'd say over the past Over the last year, yeah, for sure. Cool. So, Andre, I guess your final thoughts on the evening as we wrap up this final edition of Quick Calls from Radway, Alberta. I had a blast doing this show. Uh, I got to take over for the, uh, conspicuous by his absence, uh, Kyle Shaw. I don't know where he was tonight, but, uh, man, I had a great time doing this, and I can't, I, I, I can't wait for next week for Nicole Matthews. Man, I'm... Just everything about the tonight impressed me. You and I both, man, I think three big takeaways I've got. Number one, obviously, more Alberta Indie Dream matches. I am very, very excited. Um, not only about the match we just got to watch, man, because I'll always say two of my favorites in the industry. Um, and I'm very excited to watch more of my favorites in the industry. We talk about Chris Parrish. Who else could potentially make a claim on these? Yep. I think that I'm very, very excited about those. I think debuts, that's the next big thing I want to take away from this match because you talk about the Canadian Goose, you talk about the Canadian Grizzly, you talk about Kaylee Morgan, you talk about uh, you talk about Blade, like the people that, at least for myself, were the ter- was the first time that I was watching them. Absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent. And I think that it's something you and I talked about actually on... Uh, you know, it's still coming up, but on the upcoming Monday Night Shaw, is I think that success breeds success and the fact that you're starting to see all of these wrestlers build on what each other is doing and start yeah. to push each other to their limits or why we're starting to get such great cards, why we're starting to get even debuting wrestlers able to execute at a high level um, yep. early in their career. And I think that it's why Alberta Indie Wrestling is some of the best independent wrestling in the world. Which was going to be my third point, but I just wrapped a nice little bow on that one. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in the Quick Calls. Uh, we, this was a blast tonight. I had so much fun. I know every I, uh, the guys look like they were having a lot of fun out here in front of this crowd. And man, capped it off with a barn burner of a main event with a very, very interesting ending. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for... Uh, watch it quick calls. Uh, Spencer, plug plug your crap before we no, go. You know what? You open the show. I'm closing the show. All right. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at that Canada guy, on Instagram at that Canada dude. Uh, don't forget to check out Backbreaker Media on Twitter at Backbreaker Medi because we don't need the A because we're Canadian enough. And don't forget to check out WinColumnSports.ca because I want to get that plug in before he does. That's fine. You only got a bit of the plug in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Spencer Love. I have been your co-host of this week's edition of Quick Calls here on the Backbreaker Media Network, a proud member of Win Column Sports, where you can find all your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling, but especially the great wrestling here in the province of Alberta. Follow me on Twitter at SpenningLove underscore WCS. Follow the entire company of Win Column Sports at WC Sports CA. And follow the great wrestlers of RCW. There's too many to mention, but man, they're some of the most talented individuals in the world. I mentioned that specifically specifically about RCW right now, but the same can be said about a lot of the great wrestling out there here in the province of Alberta, Canada. Once again, you've been listening to Quick Calls on the Backbreaker Media Network, part of Wind Column Sports. And, and support independent wrestling wherever you are. <laughs>